Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another exciting broadcast of Deep Cough and Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez, and I'm excited today because I believe today is going to be a, a great day for all of us, and I believe we're starting to get on that road, that journey, so to say, of discovery. You know, one of the things that I love to talk about and preach on in a lot of different courses we have out and, and books and CDs and stuff is basically the discovery and the journey of ourselves. And a lot of times we don't focus on that in the church because we're too busy focusing on trying to find out exactly if God loves me or not. See, I've realized in my life you have to learn to settle the issue, settle the thing from what religion tried to put upon you. And religion tries to let us know that God is judgmental, God is wrathful, God is loving, but yet God is hateful. And, and, and you know, sometimes he, he wants, uh, you know, this or that in order to please him. Here's the thing that we have to come to the conclusion about to realize God is not a human. If you understood the Hebrew and the Greek words when it deals with pleasing God and all these other ones, you'd begin to understand it's not a pleasing in the human way. It's not about if I don't have my way, I'm going to be upset or mad at you. That's how a child thinks. But you have to understand from a Hebrew and really in an Aramaic point of view, and the word pleasing does not mean and doesn't represent that type of you better make me happy or else. And so we have to be able to do research and find out exactly what all these things mean. And once you begin to settle the issue that God is good, that God God is love. There is no uh, in Him. There is no shadow of turning. The Bible says uh, nothing can separate us from the love of, of the Lord. Then you begin to understand if there's no shadow of turning in Him, God can't turn from anything else but love. He can only be love, so He can't turn away from it or turn in anything else but love. And so once you begin to settle all of those things in your life, you begin to realize that I'm on a road in discovery of journey about myself to then to know who I am. And basically what it is that God has called me and created me to be and how I'm called to live. And when you begin to do that, you begin to realize that obedience is better than sacrifice. And I believe one of the obedient ways uh, to begin to do what we're called to do in life is to understand who I am. Understand what I'm called to do. And one of the courses we put out recently with me and a friend of mine, Wayne Sutton, is actually called Life Coaching 101. It's actually been one of our biggest sellers. We've really been surprised. It's been a, an amaze. It's been one of our biggest sellers. And it's actually a six CD teaching set series you can get in CD format or MP3 format. Most people choose MP3 format only because it's quicker and less expensive. But yet in these six teachings, we deal with a lot of different areas, a lot of different things about life coaching. And one of the things I wanted to share with you guys in today's broadcast is a lot of people think life coaching is basically just motivating you. It's just getting you happy and motivating motivating you back from being depressed. That's not how life coaching works. Life coaching deals with discovering of the Christ in you. It deals with who you are, the gifts in you. See, one thing people have the misinterpretation or miscommunication on when it deals with life coaching is life coaching is not about just pumping you up. It's about not uh, you know making you feel good to where you're constantly coming back to us. It's about empowering you of that which already lies within. See, in the church today, we're so busy with going to the altar, finding deliverance. And then, it's funny to me, because pardon pardon me for saying this, but the majority of you know what I'm saying, because you either have been one of these people, or either you've seen this week after week. And you need to learn to challenge your thinking and your theology. Most people don't do that, and they don't realize how ignorance and stupidity, to be very honest and blunt with you, flows so much in the church. Because a person that constantly needs a breakthrough, you know, if, if you're the kind of person that needs a breakthrough, week after week or breakthrough every two or three weeks or breakthrough monthly, something's really wrong with that situation. Because when the sun sets free, is free indeed. And you have to remember, your mind plays games with you. Your mind plays tricks with you constantly. And it's not about some devil thing with a pitchfork. It's not about some demonic thing always. It's about the human nature of renewing the mind. And you've got to realize your mind controls your, your life. Your, de- your mind controls your destiny. And some people would say, how can my mind control my destiny? Easy. John the Baptist, before the whole New Testament began, made it very plain about the word repentance. He said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And then we read later on where the kingdom of God is inside of us. Because John the Baptist wanted to start off, quote unquote, so to say, in the, in, in the, uh, in the New Testament by letting you know this new covenant is going to be based on not some flesh and blood thing, since you don't wrestle against flesh and blood, not some covenant, constant 
constant devil always after you. It's about the thinking process. Your life is guided and governed by the things you think. And the Holy Spirit breathes over the things that you've learned and fresh revelation and gives you downloads daily. That's why we're called to have the mind of Christ. Because my mind begins to let me know that I am in control. I am in charge of my destiny in the sense of knowing what I want to produce today, what I'd like to be able to birth forth today because of the fact when you lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge Him that simply means don't lean to your mind constantly telling you you're under attack, you're under warfare negative, negative, negative. The devil's after you. Negativity. You know, I think I'm coming down with with some kind of horrible rotten flu. Negativity. You know, uh, everything's about negativity and most people don't 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 um relate the devil and all this other stuff you know with negativity but it's negative it's all negative stuff and when you begin to understand that your mind actually has control to know that if I lean towards all the negativity of the unrenewed part of my brain then what's going to happen is I'm going to find myself at a place where that's what I'm going to produce and birth forth I'll give you some great examples I know people who go from person to person dating and dating and then all of a sudden they take a couple of years off and they don't have any one of their lives and the whole those two three years of their life they don't stop to to think to themselves hey you know what I need to get on online dating maybe because most marriages nowadays have been online dating and they've been successful or maybe hey, I need to get out in the open go with some friends to restaurants and and find myself actually hanging out in society to where I can attract uh, you know the mate that a God wants me to have and watch that person be right and smack dab in the path of where I'm, I'm going to be because the old saying is true they're not always going to come to church. They're not always going to come knock on your door. And and some people would say, well, I'm going to find a, a man or a woman at church. Well, good luck with that if you are if you have 10 people or 15 people. You know? Or if you're not involved in small groups to where you can actually have interaction. And so, these people I t- that I intend to know find themselves constantly as, as they're single, being negative, being negative, being negative. Nobody's going to like me. Nobody wants me. What's wrong with me? You know? And they make jokes about it. But what they're doing is they're piercing their soul they're piercing their soul with an unrenewed mind of negativity that is constantly prophesying to them, telling them how their life is and how their life is going to be. You know, the Bible makes it very plain who he was, he who is, and he who is to come. Or the or the Greek literally means constantly coming. Because God is constantly coming in our lives. And so through all of that, guess what? You're speaking negativity of your now moment and you're and you're moving into a constantly coming mentality of speaking negatively. negatively negativity uh, to a constant now moment uh, that constantly comes within your life. Because guess what? You have the mind of Christ and that can speak a life and death to your situations. And then that person gets with somebody, several people that I know get with people and all of a sudden they, they still have that unworthy mentality because they're so used to living in negativity. And that unworthy mentality says, Mom, I'm so lucky to have you. And oh, wow, what is it about me you like? And, and, and you realize nobody likes to hear that kind of stuff. People that want to be with somebody doesn't like to hear that. They don't want to feel as if, wow, you really think you're that kind of scum of the earth that, that I'm supposed to be lucky and fortunate and blessed to have you. I mean, you know, um, I don't get that. And and, and so you, you, you have to remember that when people get in a in a train of thought, it literally conducts their lives. And then guess what? They end up in another broken relationship. You have to learn to look at yourself and know, that who, know who you are. And that's one thing life coaching is all about. Life coaching is a place and a product where we teach you how to pull out what lies with in you that's been asleep for so long. Life coaching is about letting you know, look, you got to change the way you're thinking. You know, like I said before, when John the Baptist said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he literally means change the way you're thinking because you can't go into this new covenant with the thinking process of a God being mean. Hello. You can't go into this new covenant with an idea that everything is on the outside of you or maybe God is over there or God is over here and God's not over here and God's not over there. Hello. Then you get, begin to realize that John the Baptist is letting you know God is everywhere and in all things. That's what the the Bible says that. The Bible says God is in all things. Did you know that? The Bible says God is everywhere. 
And so you begin to understand the concept that I have to change and shift my paradigm in which I've been thinking because I will never understand this amazing God of love until I shift my way of thinking and realize God is bigger than I thought. And so all of a sudden, that's what life coaching does. You begin to understand, you begin to have an awakening in life coaching to understand that, you know what, I have to change the way I think Simply because the fact everything I've been I've been looking for all my life, it has been like gold nuggets buried on the inside of me, called that treasure in this earthen vessel. And life coaching helps to awaken that which lies within. Life coaching life coaching awakens the very product. I want to use the word product for a moment. The very substance, the very life giving seeds that are that are all sitting inside of you, waiting on someone to tap into that life source and awaken in it. The Bible says, Jesus said, I am the light that lighteth every man. That means there's a light inside of humanity. We are made of light. Like science says, we are light or energy slow down into matter. You know? I mean, it's amazing today that you get even some very religious people who are upset with the idea of even using the word energy in church, and yet it's all through the Bible. It's all through the New Testament. Even Did you know that even when you deal with spiritual gifts, that if you read things that Paul mentioned about spiritual gifts, you'll find find out that the Greek word actually is energy. Why? Because there's an energy source, an energy flow that flows from God through you. So folks, you're energy. You are divine energy. You are uh, you have you are made up of over 100 million subatomic particles. You are light. There is essence that uh, of a thinking process in every single organ of your body and your skin is even an organ. If it means every organ in your system and on the outside of you has a has a, a rem- Remembrance to it, where it begins to captivate and, 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 and gain knowledge, and it has a memory bank to it. Your whole being is nothing more than a memory bank. Did you know that? And so, see, you're more than what you've been taught. And God made you that way because God made you wonderfully and fearfully created you. And you've got to be able to understand that in the, in the counsel of many, there is such divine wisdom. And in the counsel of life coaching, we'll begin to target and teach you and train you actually what you are, who you are. And one of the things people don't understand is we teach people... um what makes you happy? And I, I, we're able to get inside of your spirit, so to say, and pull that thing out that's been there. We talk about what's your attitude? What do you love? Uh, what do you know? What are, what are you good at doing in your life? Finding your element, folks, is where life is all, what life is all about. It's finding your element. You might say, no, life is about going to heaven. No, it's not. Life is about becoming the Christ on the earth. Because as, I am, as He is, so am I. It's about living the Christ while you're here. Eternity is already set into motion with God. I'm not worried about eternity. Eternity is the last thing I'm worried about because it's already set into the motion of Christ on the cross. So that's one thing that is a done deal. The next part of me is the awakening process of being the Christ in the earth and moving in a successful mentality, which means everything I touch will begin to prosper and turn to gold. Every life that I touch will begin to make a shift, a paradigm shift, by the repented lifestyle that will begin to pour forth out of me to them to shift their life into a pattern of energy that's constantly flowing and renewing itself through the mind of God. And see, life is about living like Christ's life here on earth. God said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. He died that you can have life. And when you begin to understand that you are life, you begin to realize if I am life, because I have get what a heart I have a heart in me that pumps, and it pumps more than I can ever think think or imagine, and it circulates like energy blood throughout my my veins and my body. So guess what, folks? You are alive. The problem with most people is you're alive, but you're not living. And in life coaching, I can teach you and train you how to live. How to live the life, because if you're not living life, hear me out for a moment, and you're finding yourself constantly saying, you know what? I don't know what I'm called to do. I'm unhappy. I don't have a spouse. I don't have the right job. I don't know this. I don't know that. And let me tell you something. 
something. You're not living the life that God died for you to have. And so if you're not living life, then guess what? You're not moving in what God died for you to move into. And that's a terrible thing. He didn't say, I've come to give life that all of you guys won't go to hell because you're all wretched sinners. He never said that. He said, I've he said, I've come. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And God died that you can have life. And you can know what it's like to live the life that He is wanting to give to you. And He's already given it to you. You know, and so when you begin to understand that concept, then you begin to realize life is not hard. Life is not bad. Life is actually very good. It's full of amazing great things. And guess what? Many of us tend to not pay attention to throughout the day. And yet when you begin to when you begin to be taught and trained how to walk in awareness, how to live and find the good in the things of this world, and you begin to pull forth the godliness within everything around you, and you begin to be a creator, to create your environment, create your reality, create the things around you that you know God has put you in this world to do, then you begin to understand that God says you are living the life and the abundance of life I've called you to live. And that, my friend, is the obedience better than a sacrificial type of live of life. You know, a person who's wandering is a is a prodigal. A person who is still looking is a seeker, but the problem is after a while, even though you're a seeker, you've got to learn to find what you're looking for. Ask and it shall be what? Given. Seek and you shall what? Find. Knock and what? The door shall be open to you. There's got to be points in your life that you reach your destiny. You you run the race. Guess what? The whole life is not about a race. It's about races within your life where you run this race, finalize it. Run that race, finalize it. You go from glory, and then once you've mastered that level of glory, then you go to another level of glory. You go from glory to glory. Life is about a progression of moving and shifting into a further... Uh, acknowledgement of the Christ in you, but also the you in the Christ. And that's the great thing about living. And in life coaching, that is what we teach and train you. Is And we train you how to. Now this course, for example... We have live coaching sessions. I'd be more than happy to set up with you that we can get on the phone and it's recorded and I can talk to you and I can I can life coach you, being a certified life coach. And, or, you can actually buy the, 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 the teachings that we have out, the six that Wayne Sutton and myself did called Life Coaching 101. And it will teach you and train you actually uh, things to look for within your own life, how to be your own life coach. Folks, this is powerful and everybody needs it. God put us and community for a reason. All through the Bible, you will read about groups of people. You know, the, 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 the Gentiles versus the Jews. Their groups of people. Their communities. You'll read about church folk and synagogues and, and, um, and mass and whatever it is that you're looking for. And all these words represent what? Community. Like attracts like. Community of the people, those who sort of think alike. And so the Bible says what? We're two or more gathered. In my name I'm there. Why? Because God likes unity. The Spirit of God on the day of Pentecost, what? When they gathered together in what? One accord. Community. Unity. God began to move. You look at what uh, the Bible says, you know, in the council of many there's what? Wisdom. God likes counsel of people coming together. Folks, this is what I do as a, as a prophetic voice in the earth and as a life coach. I'm here to pull out the very best of what Christ has has emplaced in you before the foundation of the earth. And so I want to be able to help you. Now, if you want to set up a life coaching session with me, all you have to do is go to our website, uh, identitynetwork.net. Look under life coaching session and just um, process it for either a 30-minute session or an hourly session, whichever one you feel led of the Lord to do, once you've processed it, my staff calls you instantly. Either calls you or emails you to set up a session with you to where your life can and will automatically awaken. See, I, I believe our lives can change, yes. But I believe more importantly, I believe our lives awaken to the light inside of us that we are. And the very substance of, of, of the treasure that Christ has put inside of us before the world's ever began. And that's what we do. If you want to, If you want to give us a call at our, at our um, office to set up the, the session. Maybe hear someone tell you a little bit more about the life coaching before me and you actually uh, go into this experience of a life coaching session. Call my office at 205 362 7133. That's 205 362 7133. 
three three. And when you do, we'll set it up. I'm here to tell you, folks, or get the get the or either get this course. I mean, if you want to, you can go to identitynetwork.net and just and just um, click on there. There's going to be a banner or a, of life coaching uh, uh, 101, and you can order the six teaching CDs. That would be the best thing for you, and actually, it can and empower you as well. So, this is what I want to share with you guys today on the broadcast because it's so important to know you've got to be surrounded by people that are not just motivating you, but people who are already successful, people who are already ahead of the game because it gives you a goal and an aim to reach for. You've got to hang around champions and winners. One thing I have to, I have eliminated from my life, and you might say, well, you think you're better than everybody else. Absolutely not. Here's what I want to encourage you. How, how much do you look at yourself? How do you value your own worth? When you value yourself, you will, you'll stop hanging around people who are negative. You will stop hanging around people who are barely surviving and hanging on. You will begin to connect. Now, does that mean we, we forsake those that are less fortunate? No, absolutely not. In fact, you're empowered more to help those in need. That's what my ministry is all about. The ministry of, uh, of Identity Network is all about supplying, empowering, feeding, uh, um, clothing, and raising up a new generation of people. Raising up a people on earth who actually will be, begin to function on their own according to what God has created them to function on. And how you do that is you feed people, you empower them naturally and spiritually. And so that's one thing we do. But in my personal life, because of the holy place in which God has created each one of us to walk in, you have to protect yourself, not from some evilness, but basically protect yourself from any type of negativity, any type of, of, of mention, so to say, of something that would shake the way you're thinking. How many people around us are negative? How many people around you are still trying to barely get by? How many people around you are not really trying to make something of themselves? You know, a person who disciplines themselves to hang around champions, who educates themselves, who uh, is creative in nature to be entrepreneurs or move up the corporate ladder of their of their. Uh, office or their job, or either those who are destined to move into their ministry and, and project this worldwide vision. Those are the people you want to hang out with. The people who know how to manage their money. There's nothing in life worse than being around people who, who do not know how to manage their money. And folks, it happens every day. People all around us. And people who do not know how to manage their money are those around you that, guess what, you'll turn out to be just like that. Because every one of us needs to be pushed. That's why the Bible says iron sharpens iron. It's so vitally important that you're around people that you can sharpen as a leader. Because you're all leaders. We're all leaders. And find someone around you that is near, near you constantly, that is constantly sharpening you. And once you do that, you begin to realize that guess what? You are destined to move up the ladder of the kingdom of God. You're destined to be all that God's created you to be. So so you have to learn to protect yourself. Look out for yourself and realize that I cannot be internationally uh, a giving and, li- and be a life source to the world if I myself am not actually a life source. If I don't see myself as being a life source, if I don't see myself as having money or even having that, uh, that substance that will change the nations around, then I have nothing to give. And so you have to be able to have it in order to give it away. And you've got to learn to realize life is not about money. It's about, it's about thoughts. It's about knowing who you are in your brain and living that reality out and pushing yourself to constantly go further, higher, and deeper because you're understanding you're valuable and you're a treasure in that earthen vessel that needs to be gotten out in the world so the world can be able to see this powerful creature called a man or woman of God that knows their stuff. Because that's why the Bible says, let the strong bear forth the weak. And so when you're strong, strong, like attracts like. Strong people hang out with strong people. Why? So when the time of need comes for those that are in need, they'll be able to be the strong arm of the Lord to be able to lift those that are in, in negativity, that are in need, or that are poor, or that are that are in desperate you know, need of something in their lives. You've got to learn this principle, folks, in your life. And one thing that I, I will tell you just last before we close is this 
a great way that you can learn to examine yourself. Because see, a lot of us think, how come I have no friends? Why doesn't anybody want to hang around me? Well, have you ever taken a look at yourself? You know, we can deceive ourselves. Every one of us, to some degree, walks in a, in a, in a small level of deception. Even though you might say, that's not me, brother. Well, don't act so holier than thou, because guess what? It is you. That's what causes deception, is someone who cannot analyze themselves and see their own faults. That's deception. So, if that's your thinking, you are already deceived. Because all of us walk in a level of deception. We, and we all walk in a level of truth. And so you have to learn to keep a check on your on yourself, your body, your soul, and your spirit. Here's a good uh, uh, way I'll, t- I'll show you real quick before we, walk, before we leave the broadcast. Is learn to be the observer of your thoughts. Learn to be the observer of your conscious mind. Learn to be the observer of who you are. Sometimes it's good to step out of yourself and pay attention to the responses you're giving people, the, 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 the conversations you're constantly talking about with people, how you're acting towards other people, and how you're treating other people, and how you're treating yourself. Learn to get out of yourself and watch that and listen to yourself. I can tell you I have known so many people in my life who were so deceived that people just could not bear or, or couldn't stand to be around them because they could not take a deep, hard look at themselves to understand, hey, I, you know what, I'm annoying. Or hey, you know what, I'm constantly negative. Or hey, you know what, I'm always talking about being demon, 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 uh, you know, possessed. Or you know what, I'm always talking about how poor I am, or how I can't afford anything, or how bad the world is, or how I hate church. See, people don't realize that you've got to learn to analyze yourself, and when you do, you'll catch on to a lot of truth, and the truth will set you free. Amen. Hey, by the way, thank you again for tuning into our broadcast today. I so appreciate it. Don't forget to go back to the website, identitynetwork.net, and let's set up a life coaching session with you. And you can just process it through Identity Network, and we can, we'll can we give you a call the moment it's processed, or we'll email you uh, in case you're out of the country. And, uh, and or you can go and purchase the Life Coaching uh, uh, 101, which is the six-CD set that uh, Wayne Sutton and myself did a while back, which has been very powerful. Powerful, very beneficial, and I'm telling you, you will definitely love it. It comes with actually six uh, CDs or six MP3s, and it's really been life changing to so many people around us. And I'll tell you, it will definitely, definitely empower you and change the way you live and the way you think, all right? And by the way, we so appreciate you. Don't forget to check out my brand new website, nowisyourmoment.com. Sign up, and when you sign up, you get one email a day, which, with, which, is, is, which is a prophetic word in written form. How cool is that? Monday through Friday, we'll give you a prophetic word in written form. That's all you'll get in the email, nothing more, nothing less, and it'll be powerful. So make sure you sign up on now is your moment.com and don't forget get the life coaching 101 set or make a life coaching session with me that we can set one up for you all right our number at the office is 205 362 7133 that's 205 362 7133 god bless we'll talk to you soon